Today we are going to learn how to model an Axe body spray inside Blender. Is, is that Axe body spray? Yeah, I had a can of the desk for emergency drugs. Okay, so first of all, as usual open up the Blender, delete everything that comes default by clicking A, X and delete. So, we can start adding the reference image. Direct to the folder in which the image is stored, and open it. Move the image to Y and Z axis to adjust its position. Now, let's add a cylinder and scale it down. By tabbing into edit mode, select the top and bottom faces, press G and move it as per the size of the can. Select the top face and hit Ctrl B to bevel it. Use the scroll wheel to add segments. When you are happy with the result, extrude the top face along Z axis a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then, select the bottom face, hit Ctrl B and bevel it. Select the bottom face again and extrude a little bit along Z axis. By the way, here I'm trying to make the bottom part of the can. You cannot find the bottom part that I'm going to model in the reference image. I thought it may look better to add that part. If you are not interested in that part, feel free to skip it. So, after extruding, select all the extruded faces along the circumference of the cylinder and press Alt-E to extrude along its normal. Extrude up to the same size of the cylinder. Now I'm adding a subdivision surface modifier and shade smooth. Now we have to make some edges sharper. For that, press Ctrl R to add a loop cut to tighten the top portion. I'm using mean crease for the bottom edges. For that, Alt click on the edge loop you want to make sharp and Shift E and drag the mouse. bottom part of the spray can will be in a concave shape. To create that, select the bottom face and insert it several times by pressing I. After that, click on the proportional editing tool on the top of the screen and press G to move the inserted face along Z axis until you get a proper concave shape as spray can. but the bottom edges are too sharp. To solve that, add an edge loop on the side by clicking Ctrl R and extrude the faces along Z axis. Now model the cap of the can. For that, I'm adding a cylinder and scaling it down as per the size and added shade smooth. Usually, axe spray can tops are flat. But as an artist I thought it will be nice if I add a slight slop to the top part. It's all up to you. If you are not interested in that, feel free to skip it. Otherwise stick around. For making top part slop, tab into edit mode, select the top face and on the left side, you can find an option called shear. Click that and you can find a green handle appeared on the screen. By clicking and dragging that you can make a slop.
I'm adding a little bit of bevel to the cap by clicking Ctrl B. OK. Our modeling is completed. Now let's jump into the shading process. You can find the link to the texture that I'm using from the description section. Select the body of the can and UV unwrap it using project from view option. You can do it by tabbing into edit mode. Press U and select project from view. You have to set front view before unwrapping it. Then go to the material tab. Add a new material. Split the screen all drag and drop the corresponding texture to base color. Then go to UV map section and align the texture accordingly by tapping G. Once you are happy with the position of the texture, Adjust the roughness, specular, and metallic values to get a nice result. Do the same procedure for the cap as well. The cowl should be pure black. So adjust UV accordingly. But I'm thinking the texture is too shiny. So I'm adding a noise texture connected with color ramp to roughness input. If the node wrangler add-on is enabled, you can press Ctrl T to add mapping node. After a bit playing with the node values, this is the final material setup I'm happy with. Now I think it's the time to save the project. To light up the scene, I have added three point lights, one area light along with a camera. You can choose your own aspect ratio for the camera. These are the positions and values of light that I am happy with. I also changed the world color to pure black. To reflect the light, I have added a plane, scaled it, extruded it, and beveled it until I get a nicer backdrop. I have tried some materials to the plane and ended up giving a gray color. Finally I rendered the image to my desired folder. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys learned something. Thank you.